bad. Oh, 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 big left to my stop this. The Red Wings looking to hunt him with a hammer fist. Good, grab it down here for slow mo boys right here. Oh, All right, we are here at B2 Fighting Series 155, Jackson versus Fraley. I am Alex Hacker. This is, of course, social media kid Chris Wideman. Chris, how are you feeling, man? I'm fantastic, man. Why are you lying? Stop lying. <laughs> I'm very tired, but this is the first show here in Monroe, Louisiana. Very happy to be here, man. Great crowd, uh, great state. Happy. So. Yeah, I, I would say that happy is the only way to put this. After what we've been through with this car, you know, several fighters missing weight, one fighter pulling out. We'll be honest here on the breakdown on the post-fight show. Uh, there was there were some antics at weigh-ins. A couple guys didn't show up at all. One fighter drove and made weight and just decided not to fight, truth be told. Uh, but. All of that aside, this card delivered. Let's start with our main event of the evening. What a war between Dylan Five Star Fraley and Iron John Jackson. Very entertaining fight, to be honest with you. It played out exactly kind of how we thought it would. Two guys, you know, two high-level brown belts. Uh, it was funny because it was, it was interesting to listen to Fraley's corner sit there and tell him, your jiu-jitsu is better than his, your jiu-jitsu is right. better than his, and in the third round to get the submission. I mean, Fraley's going to be a, a true prospect to be, to be, you know, reckoned with. So. Absolutely. I got a chance to talk to Iron John Jack Jackson after the fight. He said that in the third round he slipped and fell and then Fraley threw some head kicks and he said that he could feel his confidence growing and growing and growing and at that moment he said oh you know god it's uh it's not going the way I want it to right now and he kind of you know just kind of was in a, a mode of defeat right it's the same term we heard from Dylan Fraley's corner over and over again deep water deep yeah. water he doesn't want to be here deep water and Fraley drug him into deep water and yeah. just opened up the choke, peppered him up a little bit, cooked him to the bone, and, and got the sub. So It is what it is. I will say I was happy to see uh, Iron John Jackson after the fight was over. You know, he was all beaten up and bloodied. But he gave us a, a, a good big flex. And there's absolutely no reason not to because he just went to war with one of the best, you know, featherweight, lightweight fighters in the country and went toe-to-toe -to -toe and had his moments. Right, and I'll say regardless of the outcome of the fight, I am a John Jackson fan. Yes. I will be looking for one of his T-shirts online if you have one. Send one to me. I'm a fan of the guy. He's a true warrior. So I want a T-shirt too. <laughs> Ask him right there. All right. Hey, Aaron John Jackson, can I get a T-shirt as well? Just two. I wear an extra large. I'm trying to get back down to large. It uh, may or may not be in my future. It depends on how much travel I have to do. I'm not do. saying my shirt size on camera. So Let's compare our bodies right now. <laughs> what size do you think he wears? What size do I wear? <laughs> All right, come in event of the evening. Shot Mel Badman Finley moves to 3-1 and one in a tightly contested uh, victory for him. He was very hurt in the first round. Jose Seja came out and put together some really good striking. Uh, I, it went the way that you would have expected it to go for Seja. He came out, walked forwards, threw hands. Right, that dude is no joke, too. I mean, he was so aggressive. You heard him grunt with every single yeah. punch. But Finley is, I mean, it, it is such a fascinating story to see him start his 0-1, get to 2-1, and, and fight somebody like Seja and actually be tested. He got dropped a couple of times in the first round and to, you know, overcome adversary, uh, adversity in a sense. So Finley's going to be somebody that I'm very happy to have in that lightweight division. So, As someone who has fought, um, it, I will say this. It's very special to find someone who can come from behind and pull off victories. That is uh, not in, in the, the range for most fighters. You know, myself, particularly as a fighter, when I fought, I was, you know, I was perfect when I was better than my opponent. But I, I, I struggled beating opponents that were better than me. And not to say that Jose Seja was better than Shamel Finley in this fight or vice versa, but in that first round, Jose Seja was certainly much better. And Shamel came from behind and pulled it off in the second round. Right, and it's not even one of like the Hail Mary last minute finishes like we see with New and, uh, New and Overstreet. Yeah. It was one of those things where he actually came back, made the adjustments, landed the right shot, and finished the fight. So very, very impressive. He's going to be fun to see in the Flyway Grand Prix. Yeah. I hope that works out. I would love to see him. What again. about him saying, I have no clue who Israel Galvan is? He might feel a little disrespected, but that fight is one that I was, no disrespect to say, ha, three weeks ago I was looking at this. It's like if Finley wins and he fights Galvan, I mean, fireworks. Yeah, for sure. We hope to see that one. I, I hope that Sean Mal Badlin, Finley, Badman, Finley, will sign that contract, of course. Uh, we're talking about it like it's signed, but let's just say that it's going to happen. All right. Fingers crossed. Moving on, we have to talk about a controversial disqualification victory for Nathan Mitchell over Slow Mo Boyd. Uh, we know Nathan Mitchell very well. He wanted to get a victory over Slow Mo Boyd, but he didn't want it in that fashion. Right, and that's Right after it, I was signed the contracts, get the third fight. I mean, yeah. the, both these guys showed up. Neither one of their opponents were, were game to fight. They looked at each other and said, 
You it. want to run it back? Hey, I, 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 see, I see you over there. <laughs> and they, they faced off at weigh-ins. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest with you, I, I wasn't at weigh-ins yesterday. I didn't know this fight was happening until I saw the video. And I was like, yeah. what the hell? Like, this uh, is happening. Oh, so yeah. uh, we'll, we'll have to see the third fight, to be honest with you. It was, we stated multiple times, fight of the year contender. Yep. Um, the first knee looked like it did the majority of the damage. The second knee, it was flush enough to call the disqualification. Right. If it would hit the glove or something, I talked to Bobby Wambach a little bit after. He was looking at my angle on my phone. Um, if the knee would have hit the glove, it would have been a different story, but it was clean on the temple. It's it enough to justify the disqualification. Yeah, it, it is what it is. And uh, as soon as it happened, you saw Slow Mo get up and go, yeah, kind of like Bo. He, he knew immediately. Bo Turnblum in his amateur debut. Against yeah, he, co Jake. he covered his face. Right. He just knew immediately, like, crap, man. Like, that just happened. You know, it is what it is. Uh, how about the heavyweights, JD Jenkins and Cody Beck? Cody Beck looks like a force, man. My phone has been blowing up since the second fight of the night. I posted <laughs> the video on Instagram, and it's, I mean, CTE Society. Everybody is commenting on this, going, Cody Beck is a force to be reckoned with. And I really respect Cody in a sense where on his Instagram he has future Bellator heavyweights. I, 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 I thought that was weird. I respect that. Like, kind of. <laughs> Love it because yeah. it's like everybody in here is like UFC, UFC, UFC. But Cody's like, I'm going to go Bellator. Yeah. It's, <laughs> so, it's just riding his own wave. Yeah, big, big fan, big fan. So yeah. Cody's going to be interesting. I, I think the Richard Craig title shot is, is next. I do not see anybody else in front of him. Right. Um, yeah, that would be an interesting. And, and JD. He'll be back. For sure. JD's a monster. I love somebody that comes out with a wrestling over everything banner, and then he comes there and throws bombs. JD's right. so fun. He'll, he'll be back. He's a warrior. I uh, can't wait to have both of those guys back, of course. And, and let's talk about Tyler the Hitman Hill. <sighs> Okay, so I have something to say. Tyler Hill showed up at B2 Fighting Series 136, I believe in Jackson, Mississippi. He had um, teammates on the card. He walked up to myself and the head matchmaker, Hard Rock Higdon, and said, I want to fight Zachary Kamara. That was the person that he said. Yeah. And that fight didn't really resonate with me until tonight I saw his composure in the corner just having a coherent conversation with his coaches. I was like, the Kamara fight would be a lot more tightly contested. We think both these guys have low heart rates in there. They're composed. They make smart decisions. They're actually thinking through these. You know, it's not right. really the chaos doesn't get to them. And there. Tyler, the Hitman Hill may be the only bantamweight that's longer than Zach Kamara. Yeah, I think that's fight. Two, three fights in their pro careers. Maybe we'll see those guys cross paths. For now, um, it was very clear that Tyler Hill wants a shot at that South Bantamweight title. Yeah. He paraded yeah. the back telling everybody, including people that have nothing to do with the match <laughs> process, I want the title shot. I love so, that. He's yeah. just seeing like security guys, and he's like, give me the belt! Yeah, I think he asked our caterers too. <laughs> <laughs> well, shout out to Tangie. Of course, she's uh, done nothing but great stuff for us. At the she's catering. offered us pizza like six times in the background. Yeah, Y'all can't see. But. Hand me a slice of pizza. <laughs> Blaine, hand me a slice of pizza right now. <laughs> hand me pizza. Yep. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Tangie. Look yep. at that. Tangie, thank you so much. It does not get better than finishing a B2 Fighting Series show with pizza on your doorstep. We cannot <laughs> thank you enough. All right. Um, do you think that Frenchie's going to fight amateur again? I know that he hasn't competed here no. tonight, but, uh, you know, Tyler Hill, it makes sense just to think about. No, I want this. Get out of here, Mario. <laughs> Get out of here. I'm holding this. This is how we're finishing. <laughs> is Frenchie going to fight amateur again? I have no idea. I, I probably shouldn't say this, but his coach looked at me and said he's not fighting for free ever again. <laughs> so. Which he shouldn't with the damage, he, which he, the, the damage that he has taken. Of course, mm. he should not. That's a guy that deserves to get paid. But, man. Mm -hmm. Tyler yeah. Hill and, and That's Frenchie. one of those fights I think we will see them cross past as pros and the roof is going to blow off this place. I mean, like you, you're going to see all the highlights leading up to this. You know, hopefully Tyler Hill will get that title shot. Could you imagine two former B2 Fighting Series amateur bantamweight champions crossing past as pros? Fingers crossed, you know. <laughs> we can only hope for so much. You could not draw it up any better than that. But, of course, it's not always in our hands and those guys are going to do what they want. Anything else you got to get off your chest, big dog? Sioux City, Iowa, next week. Chris Lencioni. This is your Victor fight. Rodriguez. This is yes, your fight. I matched this fight. I'm very happy about it. Uh, Chris Lencioni, Bellator veteran, uh, beat Kevin Lee on submission underground, taking on Draco Rodriguez. Draco was supposed to fight for us before, a little bit of the weight issues, but he's coming back. First fight outside of the octagon. But these guys are high level fighters. They're both on Dana White's radar. This is going to be a fight you don't want to miss. I texted you this and told you this. You didn't care, but Draco Rodriguez and I fought on the same card as amateurs. King of the Cage. Yes. Yep. Okay, I saw that. I just yep. forgot to respond. Yep. So. Future World Champs. He leaves me on red all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Great friend. I don't All right. On. This has been B2 Fighting Series 155 Jackson versus Franley. We thank you for being here with us, and it's going to be a banger next weekend, guys. I'm going to get this pizza in my belly. Appreciate you guys.